Hey everybody, tonight's pour is going to be another car themed one. Um, I'm not saying a Hot Wheels because it's not actually a Hot Wheels. This one is a different one. Um, I'm not sure what brand this is. Muscle Machines. Um, but it's kind of a cool one. I, saw, I found this at their, our flea market type place up, uh, up where I live. It's a 32 Ford Roadster. And it's kind of a neat, I kind of always like these one with the big engines in it. The cartoonish looking ones. Uh, especially the the guy that that does these this one comes with a card i'm probably going to uh tape it or insert it into the bottom of the behind the back of the painting so that whoever buys this one will get the card as well um because i don't want to i don't need to keep it but uh they had some pretty pretty cool ones that i would like to find and be able to do those but this one was this is what i'm going to do so i'm thinking of a white background purple with red there's a little red stripe in there and so maybe some white well the white will be in there so uh at least purple and red which go to good together and so we're gonna have that going out the back and uh, i think i'm gonna do like normal fairly wide uh thin to wide shot so um that's it let's get started Okay, we got our canvas ready, and uh, we're going to start pouring here. So I got the whites, white mixed, I got all my paints mixed, but I got the whites mixed, and let's get started. Well, while we're pouring, I can tell you about how the show went this weekend. I had a show in Ship Sh or Muncie, it was a Ship Shawana on the road, and I tell you it was a very good event. It was a two-day show, Saturday 9 to 6, and Sunday 10 to 5. Um, so it ended today, tonight. We got got back home, got everything unpacked, and uh, relaxing for the evening. And I sold so much that I thought I better come down and paint because I don't, I feel like I don't have very much left. So the show was... A big success uh, especially for me but uh, I went up with like I normally do I take I have eight by tens in some crates right that I just leave out and you can flip through them kind of like if if you're older kind of like the old days when you flip through you know a stack of records that are sitting in a at the store you can flip through them so people can flip through them and look at them um so i sell those so i there's probably you can get 20 to 25 if you put them on the side you so i i have like four crates of those they aren't all full but so you have a i have probably close to 100 of eight by tens I can sell. I usually have a a thing of jewelry, um, and that always sells pretty well. And I had eight sets of coasters. I've just been running low. I made four recently just for the show this weekend because I had four left. So I had eight sets of coasters. I sold five sets. I have three left. So I got to make some more. Um, and then I take a variety of 12 by 36s. Most of them are resined. I take all the Hot Wheels ones, which this one I took 14. They're all, they're, all those are on 10 by 20s. I had one 12 by 36 of the Star Trek one. And, um, then I have a, a number of 12 by 24s that are also resin. <laughs> so the first day. Well, I'll tell you, in, in the two days, I sold 10 of the Hot Wheels paintings out of 14. So I only have four left. So that's what we're doing here tonight is to get some more painted start. Because I feel like even though my next event right now is not, I have over a month, about a month and a half, but I want to get some stuff done 
I sold three of my 12 by 36s, and like I said, I sold the Star Trek one. So I, I did really well. The Hot Wheels ones were definitely the main attraction. Um, the big hit, they just, everybody was, well, not everybody, but the majority of the people would stop and at least point. Those are so cool. Oh, that's a great idea. Those are so creative. Um, so I got a lot of that. Um, so that's always cool. Um, a lot of people stop and talk, want to know what it, some of them have never seen, uh, fluid acrylic paintings. Some of them have done them, um, but, or they've seen it online. So it's always good to talk to everybody and I'm always willing to talk to them and tell them how I did it. So it was a really good show. The best story well, one of the stories is I met, actually, I met a couple of people that customize Hot Wheels. Um, so that, that was kind of cool. I never really, I think I'd met a guy years ago that customized Hot Wheels, but I never really thought about it much. Um, when I started doing these. I just do it in regular Hot Wheels. So, but anyway, so one guy I talked to, he ended up coming back. He had left the show, and we had talked for a little bit, and he kind of showed me some of the cars he had customized, which and they were they were awesome. And so he he ended up coming back. He was with a couple people, but he ended up coming back by himself and bought one from me. It was, um, if you follow some of my work, it was the yellow one, yellow background with the moon eyes, kind of, I don't know if it was a truck, delivery truck or something, I don't know what it was. But he bought that one. And uh, so we had a nice conversation again. And uh, so... When I got back home, I posted on Facebook about it, and he commented on it. He liked my page, and he commented, and he said his girlfriend, um, when he got home, his girlfriend had come back and bought two of them for him. And I do remember the lady buying the two, and I remembered her from that I had seen her in there before, but I, I guess I didn't put it together that those they were together at the time because I was mostly talking with him, um, but I did recognize the lady, um, said, oh yeah, she was, she was here earlier, and she went, right when she came up to my booth, she went straight to the Hot Wheel ones, and so at that point, especially when I recognize them, and they go straight for something, I know that they're going to buy, and uh, so she bought two for him, and I thought she was, she had grabbed the one, and uh, she was looking at another one, kind of him hawing about him, and I was like, which one, you know, which one are you leaning towards? She goes, well, I'm going to get two, and so, um, she finally picked the second one, and then it turns out that she bought them for this guy, her boyfriend, and so he commented on that, I thought that was kind of funny, and, uh, he thought it was funny, so now he owns three of them, <laughs> so, and I'm happy for him, I really am. He was a really nice guy, and uh, so I'm glad that he was able to get a couple of them. Uh, that's too funny. The other story, I don't know if it's in, it might be interesting to some people, it may not be to others. Uh, the only other, it was an incident more than a, 
than anything, I guess. But, um, like I said, the first show was nine to six on Saturday. And so about 5.30 or so, I started getting a pain in my back and my on my left side, my lower back, right above my hips. And uh, I thought it might have been just from standing and talking to people all day. Um, and then it kind of felt like mm, maybe I have to go to the bathroom. Um, and I was talking with another vendor, so I ended up going to the bathroom. And that's when the pain really hit. And um, I, I knew right away what it was at that point because I have had um, kidney stones before. So I knew it was a kidney stone attack. So um, I quickly left the bathroom and went back to my booth and told the lady vendor that was next to me um, that I, was gonna, I wasn't feeling well and that I was gonna go to the, the hospital. And to, you know, it, but at that time there was only like 15 minutes left in the show anyway. And I was so thankful that it was a two day show and I was able to leave my stuff there because I don't know if I would have been able to pack up with as much pain as I was in before going to the hospital because, um, I wouldn't be able to get my stuff that, that night because like I said, this, it was around six o'clock by the time I got to the hospital because the hospital wasn't that far away. Fortunately, also. So. But like I said, I don't know how interesting that is, but that's an incident that happened. And uh, so when I got to the hospital, when I got to the hospital, um, I called my wife. She was at home. We live about 40 minutes um, from where this was being held uh, up in Muncie, Indiana. And I was at Ball Memorial Hospital. <laughs> so I called her and uh, I knew I... I didn't want her driving up there um, because then we'd have two vehicles up there and I wasn't sure I'd be able to drive home. I figured I probably wasn't because of the pain I was in and having those before, they usually shoot you up with pain medicine so you don't feel it because it is intense pain if anybody's had those. So, um, I ended up having... My folks drove her up and dropped her off at the hospital. Then she drove me home. But it was, I got there just a little bit before 6 o'clock. And uh, and uh, it was... We, we didn't get home till just after 11 that night. But the good news is that I always try to do something different, so just bear with me on this. I don't know if this is going to turn out well or not. I think I'm going to leave it like that. But the good news is that while I was waiting, because my wife made it up there before I was taken back after I checked in, I probably was sat there for, I don't know, it was a good hour and a half or so, just waiting to go back to be checked out. But before my wife got there, and shortly after I checked in, even though I was still in intense pain, uh, shortly after that, the pain went away. And the previous 
uh, kidney stones that I've had before, the pain never went away until the stone was passed. And uh, so I don't know, honestly, because I had, I had went to the bathroom as well uh, while I was waiting. I went into the bathroom. I, did, I don't really recall it, anything happening in the bathroom, like going to the bathroom, not to get too personal and disgusting and anything like that. But, um, and then I, of course, with the pain so much when I went to the bathroom at the, at the show, I don't know if I actually urinated or not. And I, I might have, and the stone might've already passed because th that's probably why the pain went away. So, because I, I did give a sample uh, when I was back there with the doctor and they had a screen on the, on the catheter, um, so that it would catch any stones if they did pass and that, that didn't happen while I was there, but I was already out of pain, but who knows if that will be, uh, because of, of, uh, it passing or not, I guess you can. I guess it can, the pain can come and go, but it's just never happened to me. So, all right, I think I'm going to go ahead and leave it like that. Um, I think that looks pretty good. This one should do pretty good on it. I think that'll look good. So, yep, that's the pour tonight. So, uh, we'll let this bad boy, um, dry up and we will get a coat of resin on it and place that car right there. And, uh, I think it'll look good. And, uh, all right, I've got this ready. I've got the resin mixed. I got my car ready. So let's get started on this. So. And again, the resin that I'm using is Alumilite. Uh, I've actually decided to go back to the ProMarine myself, but since I bought this, I'm gonna go ahead and use it. It's not too bad, but just a couple of things probably have swayed me from this back to ProMarine is, um, one is heat resistant. I couldn't really find anything that said this was heat, what the heat resistant, how hot you can get the resin for coasters. And uh, I'd make a lot of coasters, so I would have to go ahead and get Pro Marine as well anyway. And I don't really want to have to buy two types of resin. Um, I didn't really like the way the resin set up on the last one I did. Uh, the next morning I wanted to, with the Pro Marine, the next morning I would come in and get it. It'd be just a tad tacky, but I would get the, it would be a good time to get the tape off of the back, um, because it would, it would peel off easy. The longer you let it sit, the harder it's going to get, which means it's the harder, the harder it is going to get the tape off, which is what I was doing when I was, uh, you know, not doing these a lot, you learn things as you go, improve things, which is what I did with, I think I just stepped in some paint and it dripped off the table. I was painting right here in this spot earlier. I moved the painting to a different spot just so I could resin this but and I just took a shower before I come down here so I'm gonna have to clean my feet bottom of my foot so I'm not gonna take another shower tonight
But uh, so I've decided to go back to Pro Marine. Uh, that and when I when I got the last one I did, I it was so still more than just tacky. It was wet still, and so when I was taking the tape off, it stuck to my fingers because I wasn't wearing gloves because I wasn't used to it being that wet. The Pro Marine was never wet. And uh, so that kind of was a bad morning trying to get that off before I went to work. And I was thinking, how am I gonna work? How am I gonna drive to work? How am I gonna eat? How am I gonna, because everything was sticking to my hands that I touched. And I'm on a computer all day, mouse and keyboard. So that wouldn't have worked well. Being stuck to those all day. I didn't want to call in for sticky hands. That looks weird. So I ended up getting it off. Probably ruined one of my wife's washcloths in the at the in the kitchen but what are you gonna do all right let's take a look at this thing i was watching a video earlier on somebody they weren't resining but they were varnishing it which is just a little bit different way to do things but it does the same thing and she was using tweezers to get stuff off because i always have something in here it seems like a little wind or what i don't know what it is Man, that is a good idea. I gotta give me a pair of tweezers. So I can pick stuff out of there. The problem is, is that if I get a pair of tweezers, my wife will probably take them and use them herself. And then I'll have to, I'll come in here, do a resin piece and Go to get my tweezers to to get something out of the out of the resin and it'll be gone. I'll have to hunt them down. That's kind of what happened tonight on my earlier one when I wanted to paint. My level was not in here, and I was like, uh, so she had came in and got the level, and we're using it for who knows what. So, I had to go find a level before I got started painting, which isn't a big deal. We don't live in a huge house or anything like that where I have to do a lot of looking. I kind of knew probably where it was at, and it was there, but it was just, uh, come on. So, I'll probably buy myself my own level or buy her one and just keep this one. So, all right, I think that looks pretty good. There's a couple things right there, though. Boy, you got to get that light on it so you can see those things. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sometimes even a different angle, a different light, you can see stuff that you miss from a diff uh, from another light. So it's kind of weird, but I think I've got it now. All right, all that's left is well, I see one little spot right on the edge there. I don't like that. All right. Mm. All right, so now we got the car. Yeah. So this is the car I'm gonna go with. So this actually turned out a little bit darker. I was hoping the resin would kind of pull out the reds a little bit, but um, I think with the lighter outer edge, it'll be all right. 
I set this on here earlier so I knew kind of where I wanted and usually I would put it up here but I think I'm going to get it to where the tires are right on those round spots like it's churning so this is where I'm going to put it is right in there. something on the top of that. All right. So there it is. And there we have it. Another piece done. Thanks for watching.